Life is a journey from womb to tomb. It makes us laugh, it makes us cry, it makes us live, it makes us die. Hello, this is your friend Meenakshi, adding my pain to prose and prose to the pain. I read from my book, C'est la vie, The Conundrum of the Human Mind, published by Partridge and Penguin. The story is entitled, The Copycat. Sunita got dressed with a smile on her lips. After a gap of almost four years, she was going out for dinner to a hotel with Rohan. She smiled to herself as she remembered the good old early days of her marriage to the world-famous microbiologist Rohan Kapoor. He was the pick of the pack and the most eligible bachelor of those days and she was the lucky bride. Rohan was a workaholic from the beginning, but his love for his pretty wife prodded him to take off from the laboratory whenever possible to be in her arms. He used to talk non-stop and with great passion about his new gene cloning research. To Sunita, all this was mere gibberish, but she would pretend to listen anxiously as he went on with stories of his pathfinding research. If I am on the right track, I will be as powerful as your God. He would say, teasing her, I can create the perfect clone, a carbon copy of any life form. As the days passed, her husband seemed to have no time for her. He would spend endless hours, day after day, with the research team. He even got a small bed fixed in his working space to catch up on a shut eye whenever he was tired. Everything else took the back seat. The romance was out of the window. Sunita was just Mrs. Kapoor, the wife of celebrated scientist. She was a special invitee to many social programs where people would look at her in awe. People envied her, but she was sad and lonely. The four walls of her home entrapped her like a bird in a cage. She spent most of her time staring out of the large French windows at the deserted driveway of her house waiting, waiting for her husband to return from his work into her arms. She knew this was just a dream. As his research was speaking, soon he would be out with startling results that would make him an international celebrity. Sunita, Sunita! Rohan's voice was choking with emotion. Darling, I have done it. Finally, my research is a success. I want to celebrate today. Get into your best silk sari and wait for me. We will go to the finest Chinese restaurant for dinner. Sunita was shaken out of her reverie. God had finally answered her prayers. Her sweetheart was back like the good old days. Inspecting herself in the mirror for the hundredth time, Mrs. Kapoor smiled back. Her beaming face glowed with happiness. It was almost time. She started locking all the doors and the windows and seated herself near the large French window. She wanted to spot her jubilant husband as he drove in today. The clock was ticking away. Seven o'clock? What was the delay? Rowan had promised to be back by six. Maybe he was busy with the last minute winding up, or maybe he was stuck picking up congratulatory messages or telephone calls from important people. Maybe the president of the country had called him. The thoughts kept coming to her. Ominous clouds were gathering in the sky, and suddenly the power went off in the entire area. Thunder proclaimed the arrival of a storm. Sudden pelting rain drummed on the tin sheets in the garden. Still no sight of the car and Rohan. Sunita was now getting angry. Was he caught up in a brand new project, just too busy to inform her? Or had he gotten or forgotten that he promised to take her out? It was almost 9 p.m. Storm was on in full swing. The deserted road ahead looked gloomy. Suddenly, Life sprang out of the telephone and Sunita rushed to the machine. Hello, is that you, Rohan? 
Her voice choked with relief. Silence followed from the other side. Suddenly, a stranger spoke. Good evening, Mrs. Rohan Kapoor. Is that you, ma'am? This is Raju from the laboratory. I'm sorry. I have some bad news for you, ma'am. Sir met with a fatal accident, returning home at 6.30 this evening, and he breathed his last on the way to the hospital. I am so, so sorry. Fatal accident, breathe last, what, who, what? Cannot be my Rohan. Sunita was becoming paranoid. Things were happening all at once. No, no, she was in a dream again. No, this was a nightmare. The voices didn't belong to her. Her body was cold, the silk sari drenched with sudden sweat. This cannot be happening to me. What was she going to do next? She had long lost contact with her family. Her body went numb with shock. The incessant ticking of the clock and the mad drumming of the raindrops on the tin sheets were the only sounds she could hear. Like a percussion ensemble playing for a tuneless mob. Her thoughts were racing backwards. She was in his arms again. His warm smile, the warm hug, so safe, so sure. All those beautiful moments, those passionate meetings. Or oh, are they just a nostalgic memory now? It was well past midnight when the phone rang again, pulling Sunita out of her thoughts. This time she was hesitant to pick up the receiver. Her feet froze to the ground. But maybe it was an important call with regards to the accident. Maybe the hospital was calling about his body. After all, he was an eminent scientist. He deserved a fitting farewell. She gingerly walked to the machine and lifted the receiver. Hi, honey. The voice made her jump out of her skin. It's me. I'm really sorry I got delayed in the storm. I just couldn't find a landline to call you, sweetheart. My damn phone had no signals in that area. You must be mad with me. Don't worry. I'm now close by. We'll reach you in a few minutes. See you, darling. Rohan was his flamboyant old self. But, 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 but a call from your lab, fatal accidents. The words were not coming coherently. Suddenly, the bolt of lightning cut off the connection and the phone went dead. Thank God he's alive. This was a big joke. The relief came in waves to her wearied soul. Rushing to the window seat, she fixed her gaze on the road ahead. Sure enough, through the curtain of rain, she could see the headlights of the car. As it stopped at the gate, Rohan got out with the umbrella to open the knob. She waved happily to the man and he responded with a flying kiss. What a blessing this was for her. The damn phone ringing again, back in life ringing. Why is the phone ringing? Sunita rang to the machine cheerfully saying, Hello, yes, who is this? Hi, honey, it's me, Rohan. I'm sorry, I got stuck in the laboratory. All the roads have become rivers. You understand, don't you, sweetie pie? Please don't wait for me. Sleep. Get ready for me in the morning. This time, I will not leave you for a minute. Sunita stared at the porch in front of her as Rohan drove the car into her home. The telephone stuck to her left ear. Rohan was still on line, begging her to be excused that night. And that brings us to the end of the story. Science and the science of cloning may change us forever. Don't dare play with God's plan.